Good morning. This is Gardner Israel. It is in the morning time and it is raining outside. Therefore, we will not be hunting this morning sitting here trying to figure out how to sharpen this slick trick <clears throat> 100 grain crossbow, one and an eighth inch diameter arrow that I shot. And I think I killed a deer with it. And it stuck in the ground after it went through. And I, some people say they throw them away after they use them one time, but I don't have, I don't feel like I have that kind of money to throw them around. These come three, three of them, four. I didn't, I don't know how much I paid for them because I bought them with the crossbow, but most of these guys are 10 bucks a piece, $40, maybe a little more for four of them. And I'm trying to figure out how to sharpen this. And I can see that it's not sharp because it will not cut this paper. I picked it would kill a deer. But I guess sharp is better. So I'm going to be working on this. I've got this. I've tried to sharpen them with this ceramic round thing with some effect. Some, But then I got this uh, I had this Smith's uh, combination diamond home. It's got a hook sharpening groove in it and it's got a smooth side or a fine side and a rougher side. You can actually feel the rougher one. This red one is the finer one. But I got something I want to read to you here and I have noticed in my previous videos when I read the Bible or something from the Bible after I do my crossbow videos or whatever video I'm doing that YouTube will invariably pick out a picture of me with the Bible or the Bible and they use that as the is that called the thumbnail sketch so when you click on YouTube you see the Bible not the arrow or not what I'm talking about I think they do that on purpose I believe YouTube probably would rather people not be involved in the Bible or stay away from it because I believe YouTube is probably part of the deep state. So I'm, what I did this time was I, I got my piece of paper and I took my scripture and I got it printed out on a piece of paper to read it. It's just to see. I'm curious when we download this one, upload it, I'm not sure which it is. It's probably upload, isn't it? When we go from our computer up to the World Wide Web and to YouTube. So I'm curious if they're going to pick this piece of paper. I mean, pick this. This is not the Bible. It's just a piece of paper. But if I had the Bible sitting here, I just about bet you that they would show that. <clears throat> now, people that already believe the Bible, that's not going to deter them. But I'm not really after people that already believe I'm after the lost sheep. The people that are on the fence or even possibly totally lost that are fixing to get in some kind of a big pickle and they're going to cry out to God. And that's pretty much what we're here for to get us. God's plan is to get us in a pickle. Well, when we're born into this world, we're in a pickle because that which is born is going to die. And we have a lifetime, some short, some long, to 
observe what's happening. When we get of age, we realize, hey, this is not going to last forever. <clears throat> and we then begin to think about it. What does it mean? What's this all about? And of course, the satanic side is telling us it's about nothing. We just die and we're never heard from again. You came out of the primordial slime, lightning struck it, and life started and evolved over millions and billions of years until you're what you are now. Well, that's obviously absurd. I'm not going to say it's impossible because I don't believe in thinking like that. But I'd say that would be way down my list of things that account for us being here. Maybe possibly at the very bottom of the list. <clears throat> so I'm trying to reach out to you guys out there that are wanting to think about it a little bit. I've had a lot more time to think about it and I have uh, possibly something to say that might help you. Now this is from that book that YouTube probably wouldn't want you to look at. This is from John, this is from the New International Version, this white piece of paper. John 11, 25 through 27. And this is what it says. <clears throat> Jesus said to her, well her is Martha, quote, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. All right? This is a promise purportedly made by Jesus to Martha. Yeshua, the Messiah, is his real name. And you notice in this scripture, she uses the word Messiah, the Son of God. Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, says, the one, that would be you, lost sheep, the one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? He's asking you that. Do you believe this? Now how do you get to where you believe something? Well, you have to have some evidence. You have to have some knowledge about a particular thing before you can make a reasonable um, a reasonable um, decision on whether you believe a thing or not. So what that means is that if you, you can't just say, oh I don't believe that. Well, you've heard all your life that this is not true. This is, this is a lie. You're just made out of, you're just slime. But you haven't heard the other side of the story very much. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. If you're going to make a rational decision about this, I would say that you need to look at the evidence. There's, there's the Bible itself which gives the story, but there's also logical evidence. One of the things is, does it make sense that we're made out of slime and that we turned into this? I'll tell you what my grandfather said to me one time when I asked him about it. He was getting to be, you know, in his mid-80s, not long before he died. Another one of the great theories is that we came from monkey slime, and then we evolved into this, and then finally into monkeys, and then finally into what we are. And his way of looking at it was this. I asked him, do you think we came from monkeys? He said, well, if we came from monkeys, how come they're still monkeys? 
That was his reasoning about it. So he was saying, no, I don't think we came from monkeys. This is a big promise right here. Big promise by a guy that says, if you believe in me, you will not die. Well, our bodies are going to die. It didn't mean your body, because he was this this thing here was where he raised uh, Martha's brother Lazarus from the dead. He was buried four days. Okay, that's that's all I got to say about it. Check it out. If you if you're not one of the sheep, you're never going to believe this. But there's a whole bunch of people out there that are his sheep. They are also referred to as lost sheep. And he is going to get you. He said, I will not lose one of my sheep. And I am very grateful to him for allowing me to help look for the lost sheep. Now, I don't for a minute believe that Yeshua, Jesus, couldn't find those sheep himself. I have no idea why he lets his uh, believers help him look for the lost sheep. But that is the way it, it, it's done. And he also reaches out sometime to the lost sheep himself in a dream by, you know, just gets, does it himself. Alright, so I want you to think about this. If you're still watching this, that's a good indication that you just might be one of those lost sheep. And you're going to get in a pickle here, all of us do, sometime, and you're going to, you're going to reach out or cry out even in your mind, Oh, Jesus, save me, help me. I'm not having a good time here on earth with this situation that I got myself into probably by doing something wrong. All right, this is Gardener Israel. I hope this helps you. I'm going to go back to sharpening this arrow. Signing off.